What the hell are you? I'm you, from the future. I'm going to warn you. If you release this before Christmas and you use paints on the craft covers, it will cause a ripple in time, causing the fabric of space and time to start collapsing on itself. If you really. <coughs> I trust you to do the right thing. Please, don't hurry. Fine, this took a little bit longer than expected, but here it is. I thought I'd show you another method of making pine trees. The goal of this project was to make the ground covers completely without painting anything. Will I make it or not? I'll be using these Christmas trees. You can find them on Amazon, I have a link down in the description for them. Get the green ones, it will make your life a lot easier, trust me. Start by cutting the base off. Save them, I'm pretty sure they will be handy on some other project in the future. Make bases out of hardboard or MDF, draw organic looking shapes on them and cut them out using a jigsaw. Bevel the edges with a knife. No need to sand them, it will just make dust and you can't really see it at all. Next go to Ikea and buy some furniture to get some backing foam. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm sure if you are into crafting, you have tons of this in some dark corner of your house. This will be the base of the small heels we are going to make. Rip it with your fingers to make random shapes, stack them together or whatever you like. It's your happy place, so you can do whatever you want to. Thanks Bob. You can plan your tree placement at this point as I did. It's not important, but it will give you some confidence that everything will be just fine and you can test different layouts. Glue the hills down using PVA. Next, let's make the trunks for the trees and some extra things. It's XPS again. Use offcuts if you have them. You should always save the larger scrap pieces. It's so annoying to cut this size things from a full sheet of XPS. Cut pieces that are something like 1 to 1.5 cm x 1 to 1.5 cm or half inch x half inch and make them about 2 cm or 1 inch long. It doesn't have to be the same size. The difference in size just adds to the variations of the terrain. Show them some sandpaper and texture with a wire brush. I also made this fallen tree and the stump as I was at it. Same method as before. Gave the trunks a PVA slash paint coat so they would be a little more durable and a brown base coat. The chocolate brown wall paint I used has dried in the pot, rest in peace. So I had to mix my own using a black and a weird orange brown acrylic grass paint. Threw in some basic medium and light brown dry brushes and I think I even gave them a very light grey dry brush. Now let's work on the trees a bit. I gave the red ones some black spray paint to hide the most of the red. Get the green ones so you don't have to do this, they aren't perfect. <laughs> For the needles I used Woodland Scenic's Weed Color Fine Turf. To attach them I used a spray on glue. Give it a good spray on all sides, wait a few minutes and sprinkle on the flock. Easy, simple and effective. Lock the flock in place with a couple of healthy coats of hairspray and you're set to go. Make holes for the wire things on the trunks and glue the trees to the trunks using lots of hot glue. Here are the bushes we made in the last video, check it out after this one, there's a link in the description. The bases still need some love, let's give it to them. I selected some sticks from my wood box. They will be embedded to the bases and they already look pretty good, so no need to paint them. Ground mask will be made from my homemade modeling combo. It takes some time to dry, but it's pretty good. Mix a 50-50 mix of plaster of Paris and paper mache. Add water until it looks like cottage cheese. Use the compound to attach these plaster cast rocks. I made a mold from rocks outside, but Woodland Scenics has similar kind of mold and there's a link in the description. When they are down, slap the modeling compound all over the models except on the rocks of course. Use a small tool to go over near the rocks. Blend the border between the rocks and the compound with a wet brush. Add the fallen trees, twigs and other stuff you want to put to them. Wet them and simply push them into the compound. They will stick somewhat. You may need to glue some of them down later, but it will be alright. 
Base coat the stones with black and the rest of the ground with brown so the white doesn't show through. The stones got a basic stone paint job, dark, medium and light grey dry brushes. As I'm editing this I kind of realized I cheated on the stones but I hope you forgive me. Here's what I will use for the forest floor. It's coconut fiber plant growing thing. Chop it to a million little pieces with a knife. Good place to train on your knife chopping skills. But that's not it. Get some little dried sticks from outside. And oh yeah, bake the whole thing in the oven at 100 Celsius for 30 minutes. This will kill all the bacteria and stuff living in them. Lay down some PVA. And sprinkle the ground cover mixture all over the bases. It does look quite like real forest floor, doesn't it? Some places in between the stones and the floor were filled with sand to give them some variation and contrast. Then completely soak them with a mixture of 45% glue, 45% water and 10% dish soap. This will lock everything down. Two soakings were needed. There are Amazon affiliate links in the description for everything you need in this project. So if you need anything, check them out. They don't cost you anything extra and it will support the channel. Thanks. Once they are dry, it's time to commit and glue down the trees and bushes. I scraped the bottoms with a screwdriver to give them more surface area for the glue to stick to. Then just a healthy amount of hot glue and slap those bad boys down. You need to hold them for a few seconds. Try to think where the bushes would grow in the nature and glue them down too. What about those ugly hot glue chunks you ask? Easy, just add some more ground cover on top of them. Also I added one more layer of sand to the sand spot cause it didn't look right. And we are up to my favorite part, the flogging begins. Add glue to something like 75% of the models, leave some ground showing around all trees, bushes and the edges of the bases. I started with woodland scenic sweets as always. Then added some burnt grass coarse turf and lastly filled everything with burnt grass fine turf. To spice things up a little I also sprinkled on some of those dried leaves and some light green static grass. Then made some bushes from dark green clump foliage and glued down some grass turfs. Looks pretty realistic don't you think? Lastly, I sealed everything down with two thick coats of matte varnish. Thanks for watching and have a nice one.